clean shave spray. This is the rust technique. I've never seen this one printed, published anywhere, so I'm claiming it. Josh tried this on Adam and it worked This well. is extremely expensive. Okay, that's why we don't use this. A lot of times the one to one or the one to five works. And if it works, it's a cheaper product. It's a way to go. But again, sometimes it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my anchors. I hate to do that. I'm sorry, but I can't let it sit down since it's not a me. <laughs> it's going on the internet. You better look good. And I would use the two-inch elastic tape, the light plast. That's the product of choice on this. You're, you're going to get to use inch and a half tape to do this on the test. And if you can do it with this, you can do it with anything, okay? The logic here is this. Catch this. Remember on shin splints, we often talk about it being related to pronation. And we know that the other concept isn't really accurate, but we talk about the tib-fib separation and that interosseal inflammation. The science, or my logic behind this technique, is it supports the arch and it draws the tib-fib together. So here's where I go, ankle at a right angled position. I'm going to start, and I'm going to come around, look at that, uh, right there, up to my top anchor there. Candy cane. Oh, I like look that. Look at here. Look at that arch lift. Really nice inner longitudinal arch lift. There's one X. There's two X. Stabilizing tip fib, compressing it together, lifting the arch. Go back. Spread this sucker out. Spread it. Could you do this for like syndesmosis too? If you use uh, this is exactly what I just taught on the syndesmosis, but it's a longer lever because okay. we're talking anterior shin pain, and it would have stirrups. The the advantage. This is not a stirrup modification. This is an arch shin splint. So if you did it straight and then around like that, that could be a syndesmosis modification. So again, if you look at what I'm doing, I'm fanning it out. I'm going to do three in each direction with the two-inch elastic okay. tape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lace it up. And here is where most people make mistakes. I'm drawing it around and I tear. Change your tape to the other hand. Draw it around, tear. Change your tape to the other hand, following your contour, draw it around and tear, around and tear, alternating direction, lace up. And again, I'm doing this to save a little product. I'm using the two inch rather than the inch and a half. You'll be using the inch and a half. And it needs to follow your contour all the way up. Nice, clean, smooth, good arch support, nice lift, good tip fib stability. How tight, do, like if you're going to use tape, like regular tape? It's, How tight do you pull because you're going up through that firm. arch? It needs to be firm. It needs to be firm, and you'll know if it's too tight because the calf will cramp. Okay. Okay? <laughs> so that's the Russ shin splint taping technique. That, that's the one. If I ask you to do that on the test, it'll be this one, and you'll do it with all white inch and a half tape. And then the last one, and you already know this, so should, I think you know this one. Oh, Jeff. Mm -hmm. There you are. This is the traditional shin splint taping technique. Clean shave spray. It's going directly to the skin. Really? <laughs> so when you do this on me, clean shave spray, because I'm a little furry, you got to locate the pain. You want to underwrap above and below. Try to get no more than one layer of underwrap. I see some people, ooh, 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 and they use 10 layers of underwrap. You lose stability with increased layers of underwrap. Don't you have them shaved anyway? Uh, I, usually, I do, but... Here. It's not pretty, it's not common practice in here, okay? So again, anchor. <laughs> anchor. I and the anchors go right along the midline of the lower leg. And remember how I did alternating direction circum, circulars? I'm doing the same concept, but I'm doing X patterns at about a 45 degree angle. So it's tight, good full firm pressure from anchor to anchor. From anchor to anchor, there's my X. And again, this is not pretty because he's not clean shaven and sprayed, it's not directly to the skin. I'm gonna half flap my tape. I'm gonna follow my contour. Again, go anchor to anchor, keep that angle there. Half flapping your tape, following this contour, Xing it across the front.
above where the pain is. My pain, remember, was right through here, so I gotta go all the way above that. And when I get to there, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go straight. Straight across from anchor to anchor, pulling the tib to the fib, fib to the tib, tib to the fib, half lapping, straight, anchor to anchor. anchor cover up my loose ends make it all look pretty uh, sometimes I see these where people will come all the way around to hold it in place above and below that's okay if you need a little extra holding power um, those are pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, so I generally don't do that. If I'm taping directly to the skin on this, I won't do that. Can you go over it with like um? Like what? Why? Why would you? Keep it on. Keep it on. If you need to hold it, give more hold, but it won't be uncomfortable. Here's my response to that. That's an expensive way, and I think that the other technique works better than doing that. You can always. If you have the money at a freaking school. You can money. always put more on, but that doesn't mean it's going to be better because the closer it is to the skin and it meets your objective, lifting the arch, stabilizing the tib fib. This is the most traditional shin splint taping technique there is. Every coach in the world knows this. I've seen a hundred modifications to this. I've I mean, seen them over, take and Sorry. take tongue blades, <laughs> and if I've got pressure there, they tape the tongue blade into it. I've seen them take a Kramer roll, which is basically lots of layers of tissue with a plastic backing, and then they put Kramer Jesic on it. And they put that there, and you get the counter irritant effect. It doesn't do any good. We know that, right? We learned that from Melinda. We're not getting any physiological change. We're getting irritation of the skin. It doesn't penetrate any more than one eighth inch of the depth of the skin, but it feels good. So maybe we're getting a placebo effect by it. So again, you can do that. You could do a tongue blade. I've seen people use felt and put in a felt strip so that it's using the gate control theory where you're blocking the pain response by applying pressure to it. So again, I can do about 13 different techniques if I really rack my brain today on shin splint taping, lots of modifications. The ones I want you to be most comfortable with is this one and the rust technique and the one-to-one -one and the one-to-five. Those are the four big ones that if you're good at those, you don't need anything else, okay?